Rooster Teeth is a production company. We focus primarily on the online content and also comedic content as well. And we've been making digital content as long or longer than just about anyone else in the industry. We've been doing it now for 15 years and counting. <laughs> What's unique about Rooster Teeth is we are an extremely diverse business. We create content and much like the traditional media companies, we monetize that content in a bunch of different ways. We not only have our own subscription service, we also distribute our content on YouTube and do advertising there. We have our own podcasting sales and podcasting network called The Roost. We have our merchandising business, we have content licensing businesses, we have our own events business. RTX is a, our convention business, and this year we'll have 100,000 people who will come to RTX events in Austin, Sydney, and London. This facility where we are, this used to be the old Austin airport, and they were gonna demolish this airport and turn it into residential and commercial development. But there was a group of filmmakers that got together and said, hey, if you leave some of these hangars up that are part of the airport, then we can convert them into sound stages for movie and TV production. And so that's how the Austin Film Studios were born, and we've been in here now since May of 2015. Most digital channels, you're talking about you know, a YouTube subscriber or something like that. We didn't have that when we started. The very first dollar this company ever made was from digital content that people were paying to watch every single month. And over time, that came a, became a very progressive business model for the digital world. But we had no choice but to have that, that and merchandise because pre-roll ads didn't exist when we started. Looking back at 2003, it's kind of hard to describe the environment. We had to educate people that this was a web series. People were not used to watching continuing series of videos on the internet. They would watch one thing like a dancing baby or something like that. So from the very get-go, we made sure to call Red vs. Blue a web series. And likewise, with the company Rooster Teeth, we were trying to communicate to people that it was going to be more than just this one show. It's going to be a whole bunch of shows over a long period of time. I don't know how that's going to help your story, but I feel another bi phase coming on and the camera guy's already here, so let's do this thing. Great. Wait, what? I was part of Full Screen when Rooster Teeth was acquired in 2014 and we had this unique opportunity to meet these guys early on and were incredibly impressed with what they had built. We acquired them in, in 2014. I was lucky enough to be able to come over in the acquisition and be able to work closely with Bernie every single day since then. We've been able to dip into capital and expertise that has allowed the company to grow in a way that it maybe wouldn't have as an independent Absolutely. entity. And so I think it was the right timing on both sides where we understood what they were doing, we understood their vision, and we didn't screw it up. And from our perspective, we spent the first 10 years of our company what we call operating in plain sight. We, people would often talk to us about our business model and even when we had 40 employees, they were asking us, do you think one day people will make money doing what you're doing? It's like, well, we have 40 employees that are here. And so we were really kind of waiting for the rest of the world to catch up, or to catch on at least, to what we were doing. And that happened right about 2012, 2013, when suddenly the digital revolution really started to take hold. And when we were in that position, we realized we were going to be up against some people who were spending a lot of money. We were a big part of the first chapter of the story of online digital. We didn't want to be left out of the next chapter of it. So we knew we were faced with either taking on investment, and we knew the moment we took on investment, the first thing they would ask us to do would be to find you know, executives who can help us navigate this scaling process. But then we met Ezra, and we thought, if we were gonna go out and try to find this person, we wanna find somebody like Ezra. And so that's why the acquisition with Fullscreen made the most sense to us. This is where all the really cool movie stuff happens. This is where we do prop manufacturing, we do set construction, and we do any kind of like latex or resin work. What you making? The hard thing is today, as a digital content company, every part of your business is important. The businesses that I think are going to be most successful are the ones that have those highly diversified revenue models. So it's easy to say, oh, we don't want to do advertising, we don't want to do branded content, we don't want to do merchandising, we don't want to do events. Mm -hmm. But the reality is you have to do all of them. And you have to do all of them pretty well. You have to be a little mini version of Disney to be able to successfully build a sustainable business in this day and age. The diversity of revenue is super important because we can't predict all the ups and downs that are gonna happen in the monetization model, but we do know that they will happen. So we have to be prepared for whatever comes down the road.